It is quite telling that every single major secular scholar agrees that he existed. Um, I, I think that fact is completely undisputable. I think he thought he was the Messiah. He believed himself he was, an, he was an apocalyptic preacher preaching that the kingdom of God was coming soon. And um, he was crucified and died and all of that. I don't think he was, uh, I think he believed himself was the Messiah and he was wrong. There were, of course, you have to remember, there were a whole bunch of other people in the first century claiming to be the Messiah. He was not the only one that went around claiming to be the Messiah. Yeah, but the I'm gonna this one quickly respond to that. If you read Mark one one, there's commentary on this that uh, Mark calls him the Son of God. It's a polemic to those other messiahs. So there's something to think about that the that the writers of the New Testament uh, put in within the New Testament itself the the manuscripts the polemic. So yeah, I think that is a good rebuttal to that. Okay. Yeah, and an argument can be made that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and that can't be made for any of um, the other, any of the others who claim to be Messiah. So I'm not saying that that's proof that he's Messiah in this argument, but it is proof that there's a false equivocation, and we have justifiable reason to not, um, yeah, to write off the other ones without writing off this one. Yeah. And of course, I ran off. I ran off all of them, but all of them for the same reason. So, okay, let me put, I mean, so I'm going to ask you a question, David. Let's say you saw something miraculous in your life, like you saw a car being lifted up or something, and uh, it flew around and it goes, "Wow, that has to be some type of thing that goes outside the scope of naturalistic explanation." If you saw that, would you change your mind on Jesus and say, "Well, maybe the Bible"? My, the Bible's claims about the supernatural is true. Well, if I actually did think I saw that, I would question my own sanity personally. Uh, I, I'm just being honest. Yeah, no, I mean, I appreciate your honesty, and that's why I really, pre I mean, that's what I really respect about you is that at least you're bringing, you're not trying to uh, jerk our chain like some of these other atheists do. Yeah. Now, if someone claimed that they could walk on water. And if they could raise the dead and he made those claims and he actually performed them, if he, if I actually saw the guy and have like a whole bunch of people who saw him walk in water and all that and raise the dead and I saw that personally, then yeah, okay. Um, but still, um, again, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Anyway, I'm getting ready to go to bed soon. Good night, guys. Good night, man. Thanks for coming in. Great discussion. Like, you're always respectable. So much respect to you. Well, thank yeah, you good night, my friend. Good night. Good night, Orge. Good night, Nicholas. What's up, Orge? Hello. Did you want to chime in here? Go ahead. Um. Yeah, I kind of showed up late to the conversation. Uh, I only got a little bit of time myself. Um, but if you want to care on what you're going, maybe I can pop in with some insight here and there, as terrible sure. as it will be. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so we were going through Messianic prophecies that, to me, yeah. are undeniable, like Genesis 3.15 and then Isaiah 9.6 with uh, being called, the child shall be called Everlasting Father, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, and Wonderful. And I was showing that Wonderful is connected to the angel of the Lord yes. and uh, his deity there. So, I mean, it's it's undeniable deity. You can't ascribe some type of, uh, I forget they call him Hezekiah as being that, but no, it can't be a Hezekiah because the Targum says he's from before, so it can't be a man. So at least I think the skeptics understand Isaiah 9-6 is talking about uh, deity there. Yeah, I um, I guess this is not an area of expertise of mine. Uh, I had a conversation with, I want to say maybe it was Chris Keith or something, about the Isaac and Jacob parallel, supposedly. Yep. Um, that was interesting, but to me, I, as someone who considers the Bible just to be a book and nothing bigger than that, like Nicholas was making the point about the, uh, Lord of Lords, that's all still within that same book. So I, I that's why my issue is, 
I see well, when I say a that case can as be opposed made, to a prophecy fulfilled. Well, when I see that the case can be made that he's king of kings and lord of lords, yeah, that's what it was. Um, that's a matter of the history that has occurred in the world. Like um, when the elites tried to take credit for the so-called enlightenment, um, everything good in that actually came from Christianity. Um, the scientific process was also established as a result of Christian thought. And then um, if you understand on a deeper level the truth claims of the Bible, and if you understand what the elites would like to do to us all and why they've been struggling so much to do it and they haven't gotten there yet, um, that also falls into this category. So I get that it's a huge and a deep topic, but... Um, I was referring to that we can make the argument that we're seeing it through history. Um, I was not just making the argument, the Bible states it, um, rather that history verifies what is stated. Sure, and that that's a whole another tangent to me. I mean, how, how much was the faith relevant to Foundation of Science and uh, Renaissance, what have you? Um, not my expertise. I'm going to disagree with some of those things. I think being a Christian and Christianity leading the leading the development of, say, Isaac Newton's scientific method are two different conversations. So, yeah, and when we understand, um, you know, you've never. I mean, um, I can say you've never lived in a pre-cross world, but neither have I. <laughs> but. Having passed from a pre-cross identity to a post-cross identity, you know, and having passed from being such a hopeless sinner to being um, someone who's at constant joy and peace in the truth and knowing that that truth is Jesus Christ, um, it's not something that I can be like mistaken about or yeah. fake, but then it gives me insight into the difference um me as a human individual and the insight I can see testable in my own life then sure. gives me insight into how I assess the history of humanity as a matter of the difference um, without the cross or with the cross. So it comes down to um, a deep level of the damage of sin and how Jesus gave humanity the ability to... Um, see truth and to despite, me that's, despite sin to see truth despite sin yeah and that's perfectly good for you i, I take nothing none of your story away from you but to me that's anecdotal and therefore is, is just as meaningless as any other person's individual story i don't have this hate in my heart that you supposedly did so is my anecdotal story the same as yours right they yeah or i could ask xyz various religious person that can tell your exact same story. Well, I, I would describe it better as a failure than hate. The word sin means to miss the target. Like, um, even if you look at it in the Greek and it says um, to miss a share or a portion, and then um, in the Strong's Concordance, they're like, well, that's because if you lost the archery competition, you didn't get a share of the prize. That's not what it's talking about. That portion is... Um, it's a reference to geometry, so it means to miss, to not have, um, to not share in that shape, which means Wait, what, to what not... What was the word again? What was, what are you translating from? Um, amartea. Amartea, okay. From the Greek. I have no clue how to try to spell that. Amartea, Greek. Yeah, I mean, I can provide it in a minute here. But um, I think I might have found it. it's known that it means to miss the target. But then um, what yeah. the strong says about the etymology of it is rather silly, but it is known that it means to miss the target. And the reason is because not having a share in the portion refers to not being on the target, you know, geometrically. That's the correct etymology. And so when they miss the target, it's like, oh, look, your arrow does not have a share in that part of the target. You see the bullseye. So that's... Um, yeah, but the point is, is that um, it does just mean to miss the target. And so it's a reference to failure. Um, a good synonym in English would be mistake. Yes. 
And that's not to take away the meaning of sin in the Bible. It's just a matter of what is the word choice that God attached to it. And um, yeah, so sin is not necessarily like um, synonymous with hate or whatever. Um, I actually wanted to be a very good and loving person when I was an all out sinner, but I had no hope because I was a failure. I absolutely <laughs> could not hit the target. I was incapable. And, yeah, I and feel again, I am, but Jesus is capable and he is kind to dwell in me and help me hit the target, you know? Yeah. I mean, and again, I don't, you know, but we can maybe move on, but that's good for you, man. I'm very happy that helps you in your day to day and your year to year. Um, but that's just pure anecdote to me. And maybe someone else that's a good argument. The was a testimonial, I think is what you call it, right? Maybe testimony is a good argument for some other people. For me, it's as I said, uh meaningless. But you nothing know, it, to take it, away it, from your story. Well, it's not even an argument, but what it is is to help you understand when I talk about him being Lord of Lords and how I see it happening in history and stuff. It has to do with um having a deeper understanding of truth, a deeper understanding of humanity, you know? So, uh, um, yeah, yeah. I follow. I follow. Yeah. Okay. If I may, I want to address something by P Mars. He says, if God is, if God changed the laws of logic or I mean, hold on, I'm going to put this up. I'm going to respond to this really quick, but essentially, I mean, you were saying, uh, well, how do you respond to someone? Well, it, it logically contradicts the logical nature of God. So it's, it's an impossibility uh, for, for uh, God to use his omnipotence to contradict his logical nature. It's part of his being. It's part of his makeup. So it's like, uh, can you change, you know, um, the way... Uh, like one plus one is two. No, he can't do that. So might would not change that. But then, but then he would be bound to logic, and I don't, I don't really see that. Well, no, he's not through. bound because it's part of his makeup. It's, uh, it's a reflection of his nature. Like if something, if, if someone was good, does that mean God's bound by his goodness? So that's like saying God is bound by his goodness. Um, but also I think it's a conflation to say, well, God. Um, broke the laws of physics, that just means it's incomprehensible. So that's a conflation of terms. It's not, it's saying it, it goes beyond our scope of understanding into the supranatural. Right. Uh, well, um, meaning, yeah. It shows, like, yeah, in the Bible, it seems like when God is, makes himself present, uh, there's the, like the burning bush example. So, like, th we see things that contradict what we'd normally see in nature, I guess. Yeah, that doesn't contradict logic, though. See, logic is immutable. Yeah. It doesn't change, yeah. It contradicts, I guess, physics, because, like, you would expect fire to consume a bush normally, so... it Yeah, it might break our understanding of things. Well, sure. I know uh, BMOS, when I talk uh, young Earth geology with people... Uh, God seems to be busting a lot of rules of geology in order for the flood to happen and do everything. And that's a big contention with me. So, but that's not lo logic. That's like natural law, natural rules. So. Right. Yeah. So the, it's a conflation. They're purposely conflating natural law with uh, logical, the laws of logic. Is is Pima is trying to make the argument that there are examples of God breaking quote unquote lo logic laws? So I no, I was arguing with an atheist today, and I was using the transcendental argument, and then I uh, I believe that like logic can't arise like the I watched this Jay Dyer debate debate, and he said logic can't come from matter because then it would be subject to the evolutionary process and it could evolve into something opposite of itself, which would be self-refuting. Okay. And he argued that, well, because God, in my worldview, God can bas basically created logic or is the originator no. of logic. No, no, no. Don't ever say that. 
that is that is a fault. That's a misrepresentation of it. I would never argue that that God created logic. It's just a reflection <laughs> of logical nature. That's all. Are you calling him heretical? So he created the universe, and the universe reflects his nature, and his nature, logic is a part of his nature. And then, like, I also think the an evidence for God's existence would be that humans have the ability to have logic and reason because we're made in God's image. And so like, that's part of his nature that's inside of us. Is that right? Or we we're able to recognize that. I think we have an intuition or we have access to understand the logical nature of God, things that are rational. And uh, well, he's the, we would say the, I got a question on that. Good. Um, when you say that we have the l laws of logic inside us, are you implying that other animals don't? Um, no, no, not necessarily. I think animals can uh, act rationally, but what I'm, I don't mean like, I don't, yeah, I don't understand I, I, why that sentence is important, essentially. Yeah. Well, we have right. something, we, there's something about us that's different where we have a higher ability of logic and reason than animals. So. Like, like, can That's you give an I example think. of that? What, like our civilization? Well, but I wouldn't say being able to build a house is logical. Well, no, there's a lot of logical steps involved in correctly building a house. Definitely. But, but how? So, what, what particular law of logic? Are, I'm trying to narrow it down here. What particular like law of logic are you referring well, to? Here? I mean, I think it's. Well, pretty I mean, obvious. The, the syllogism for how to successfully construct a house, like even engineers with blueprints and stuff, they don't then write it out in a syllogism. That would be books and books and books for a syllogism on something like yeah, that. <laughs> but we have animals that can build structures, right? Birds can build intricate nests that hold themselves up. Spiders can build stuff. Sure. So, yeah, no, not at the same level, though. I um, mean, there's clearly there, there a syllogisms difference. Syllogisms would be far shorter. I was sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, P. Mars, but yeah, those syllogisms would be far shorter than um, the syllogisms required to describe human civilization and stuff. So yeah, it kind of... Sorry, P. Mars. Well, I just... I, I think that's funny, the, the atheist worldview about, like, basically we're just animals. And I do think we are animals, but we're also part something else, something more... And I, I, it's, it seems obvious to me, like that, as obvious as gravity, that there's a difference between humans and animals. Like, sure, they have uh, rudimentary abilities to logic and reason through problem solve and stuff, but so nothing I compared would to say, human. Yeah, I would say animals don't have the ability to introspect. Humans can have the ability to. Um, question deep within themselves things and, and rationalize deep within themselves which yeah so i think there's a difference right there and, and and i guess i'm trying to figure out at what point this is like the positive proof of god so the the introspect quote unquote is something that god gave humans that he didn't give animals is that what you're saying it's not the, i'm not mm -hmm. saying it's the proof of god i'm saying it's evidence i would say the fact well, that that's evidence sorry the fact that humans have the ability to reason and logic is evidence to me, at least in my opinion, that there's something intrinsic to the universe. Like there's something a, higher that there's a mind to, to the universe that um, the logic ultimately stems from that's inside of us. Gotcha. Okay. Right. What's yeah. interesting, the Bible says for us to meditate and to think upon things deeply. Well, that. That already uh, transcends the natural world because the natural world just doesn't do, do those things. So maybe there's something with that. <clears throat> yeah, and um, there there is some fact of um, factuality. So that that doesn't prove that there's the Christian God, but um, I do think that to it can, for there to be a fact of factuality and then for um, people to try to say there's no God of any sort, I think that um, rapidly shows itself to be a nonsensical statement because that fact of factuality has supremacy to it. We know that for sure. So that puts it into um, a God position. And we know that um, that is 
um, some of what God's character is, you know, um, speaking now from the Christian perspective, um, that God cannot tell a lie, which um, I think taken to its um, ad not absurdum or, you know, how you take things to their ad absurdum or whatever that can be done. Well, if you take that to the end of the line, that God cannot tell a lie, you get to the logical foundation of everything, you know? Yep. Yeah, for there to be right answers for us to arrive at, there has to be something providing the right answers, and that's basically God. Yeah, and we also have awareness of something that is rational and is irrational. I don't think animals in the animal kingdom even has awareness of logic or what is rational. I mean, they might do rational things, but I don't think they're aware they are doing it, though. So I guess I would phrase it as I'm not going to say that you're argument isn't a possible correct answer i would say that the natural world producing these things is also viable i'm not i'm not gonna say god can't give you logic but i do i i can see foresee and I, I think i've had this conversation with someone on here before i could foresee logic and the ability to build a building coming from uh natural processes not something inherently given as a gift from the lord yeah, and then th there would be a supremacy to that. But um, in, so that's why um, in order for apologetics to really work, we have to respect what the Bible says, that Christ is the one who makes God obvious. God is manifested. That is, God is made obvious in Christ. So to get the full picture of God, um, there is no other avenue to that besides Christ. So when apologists like try to entertain outside of our model um, in order to somehow prove that our model is right, that's really not a good way to go about it. It's the fact that the Christian model is so strong. And the strongest part of the Christian model is the beauty of Jesus Christ himself. Um, he outshines everyone else who has ever lived. And we know that if he does that, that he is God, that the scriptures are true. And we know that we have every historical reason to believe that he did that. So we have every historical to reason to believe that God is true. And then one has to, um, that God is true according to the Christian scriptures. And then one has to become a history denier or a conclusion assumer or something um, rather fallacious in order to dodge that fact. I think animals kind of have a weird advantage over us who like, uh, because of the difference in consciousness, like we can probably know God on a deeper level than animals can or connect to God on a deeper level than animals can. But at the same time, our consciousness can separate us from God because we have the ability to sin and resist God. And I don't think animals have that. Like animals can't, I don't, in my mind, an animal can't really do evil. It's just, you know. I, I agree. I'd like to put it into my words real quick is that sure. um, it takes mental gymnastics to pretend Shalom God me. doesn't. <laughs> Shalom, Gavin. Shalom. <laughs> I'll just finish my sentence real quick, though. It takes mental gymnastics to pretend God does not exist. And um, animals are not capable of that level of mental gymnastics. So when an animal does something um, that would be not acceptable to a human, is that like they, they it doesn't matter at that point then? Like an animal it's eating, just it's just its nature. It's just it's just acting in you know Well, but you were saying that animals like have some level but not the total. So like when animals commit incest, that's well, okay for them to do because they don't have that extra step of logic that we do well well there's no law that animals cannot do that like there is for humans um but the way i would explain it is that um i don't think animals um have awareness of the person of jesus christ who made the character of god oh. obvious but All when right. we go Nicholas. back to um they didn't the eat more... from the tree, right? They did animals didn't eat from the tree of good and evil, so they don't have the knowledge of good and evil. So they're just 
They're just. Can I, can I jump in there, guys? Can I jump in there? Yeah. I want to finish what um, I was okay, saying. Okay. Before... Yeah, yeah just, I want to finish what I was saying real quick. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, um, what was I saying about animals don't have that law from God to them? Yeah, and I'm not even saying that animals are perfectly obedient to God or whatever. It goes back to what I said before that um, even if the facts of nature were to be the supremacy, there is a supremacy that is undeniable. So it's undeniable that there is a God and animals can't do the mental gymnastics to like block that out. But um, the obviousness of God, which was given through Jesus Christ, animals don't have access to that. Um, now, God may miraculously spiritually put it in some animals or something. I don't really know anything about that. I can't test or observe or explain that. Gotcha. You guys are all wrong, man. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> animals are evil. I don't even would. <laughs> Wait, Gavin, it's supposed to be your turn now. The yeah, cows yeah would eat can, us. can I just jump in there? Um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, Orgo was firing shots in the chat, but Orgo, you know I love you. you you're my favorite atheist by far. He, here's right. the thing that separates us from, from animals. Number one is we're, we're the Imagio Dei. We're made in the, in the image of God. Number two is that animals um, operate from instinct, not from logic. And the last point is that as humans, we demonstrate wisdom, courage, humanity, justice, temperance, and transcendence. Animals can't do that. Well said. I like that. And um, praise. Would you be willing to bring children of light into the conversation by yeah. um, just showing yeah. his last two comments for people to see? Well, the first one first, then the more recent one. You know, so it's in order that he said it. No, no, you went too far. That was, that was the third one. There you go. So animals are under God's will, but they are also in our fallen world. For we, and it says in Romans 8, 22, for we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. And so, um, yeah, that definitely crossed my mind too, but um, I chose a different way of discussing it. Yeah, I like I like how Gavin put it. Like animals are just acting on instinct; they're not like logically reasoning, like what is the right thing to do and stuff like that. Right, well, there's no awareness of that. I, I got I gotta ask how how is you can say that, but how do you show instinct versus logic when a dolphin, uh, say, plays a game with a uh, that whatever that fish is that gets all big when it gets scared when they literally play games with them and knock them out like a soccer ball, is that instinct? Or is that like the logic of playing the game? Yeah, there, there's a level of logic there. And um, I don't even um, agree with PMARS on that in the sense that um, like I've seen a very large sea lion up in the Arctic. There was a scuba diver um, filming guy. So like a cameraman who was a scuba diver, a documentarian guy. And he kept getting in the water with these sea lions and spending a lot of time with them and filming them. And um, ultimately, he had to get out because one of them kept trying to feed him a fish. And yeah, it that. was like really emphatic that it wanted him to eat the fish because it thought, he, it thought of him as something similar to a smaller sea lion that he didn't want it to starve. And... Um, we can argue that that's merely instinct, but um, I think there is like a real love and caring that arose there, and there is real relationship with God and stuff. So I think sometimes when we try to oversimplify the difference between human and, and animals, um, instead of recognize all the sophistication, um, I think we sort of miss the mark there. I, I think you make a good argument with the like, animals can't well I, I don't quite know if i understand the thought process well but when pmaz said about the tree of good and evil and nicholas what you were saying at that same point i think that kind of made the argument made sense 
Um, I really don't, however, agree with the thought that animals aren't capable of that list Gavin said, because A, you need to verify, you need to prove that claim, right? And B, what if they can do two of the seven? Does that mean that your argument is false? You know? I was going to say something about the point you brought up about play. I don't know. I've been, I have a kitten and I've been thinking about play. And I think, I guess play is actually, you know, probably hardwired in, into us. It's like integral to, to survival. Like if the kittens don't learn to play as children, then they don't get the hunting skills they need to survive. So play uh, for in the animal kingdom is there's a, it's actually, you know, important to survival. It's not just some, you know, for well, entertainment. I agree, but that doesn't mean there isn't some sort of logic behind it. I mean, you know, we play games as well as a as a well, social animal, and there's an important reason why we play games. As, but that doesn't not, mean that we're not denying that play football. But we're no one's denying that animals have the ability to reason and problem solve. But we're just saying there's a difference between the animals and the yeah, humans. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I think that's a better argument because saying animals don't have logic is different from saying we have better logic. Yeah, to me, and I didn't to me. Get- I didn't catch Gavin's exact words, so I can't really um, state my exact opinion on the exact words he chose. But I even recognize that what I said about the sea lion, there may be less to it than I think, and it might ju- than I'm inclined towards thinking. It might be more absolutely naturalistic or sort of less. Like we have a really well behaved cat here, and like uh, he's the best good cat ever. <laughs> but I kind of think that um, a lot of it is out of fear of us because we're so big. And um, I'll just give, I have a lot of reasons for thinking this, but I'll just give one example. There's a cat that lives outside that's a female cat. And a lot of times when I come in the room and he's hanging out through the screen door with the female cat, he'll leave the room. And I think it's because if, he were the bigger one, he would not allow me to hang out with the female cat. So since I'm the bigger one, he's concerned that I'll stand against him or something. And so he just leaves the room. And uh, I mean, that's just one example, but um, based on his behavior, when we first met him and how it changed over time and stuff, you know, I, I have a lot of reason for kind of seeing him that way and so he seems like so sweet and good and stuff but um it doesn't see um when i inspect it i don't really think it's out of like love or something you know it is uh what is the argument is the argument that animals do or do not have logic is that part of the, the argument i'm sorry I've well it's more a discussion than an argument well that i didn't mean argument at a point like people are mad at each other just meant the debate Well, yeah, but what I mean is, like, um, it's not really much of a debate or something, like, yeah, I I took it as what you meant, and that was, that's still my answer, is it seems to be more of a discussion at this point. We were talking about basically... I'm admitting that I sort of don't know either way on a lot of this and stuff, and I'm just sort of taking out the pieces and putting them on the table and talking about them, so it's a lot different than an argument. Yeah, we have crows here that will take, they'll take... um, Black crows are actually, or crows are really one of the smartest birds. You, uh, people hate them; they're a nuisance. But and they'll they'll fly away. It's like put a, scare, a scarecrow out because they're very intelligent. They'll they'll get away from humans pretty quick. But they'll take um, walnuts or nuts and they'll throw them in the road and they'll wait for cars to come by and bust them up and they'll go down and get the nuts. Yeah, so it's pretty clear they got logic. Okay, that's uh, I mean, Chris Keith. I think this started with the conversation of you know like humans can sin. And um, that's why, you know, you'd go to hell or whatever variation you believe. But animals can do sinful things. Mm-hmm. So at what point it, did God, like, separate logic for being able to sin away mm-hmm. from the crow, right? If a crow yeah. murders another crow, and not in, like, group, but in, like, stab, um, is that crow sinning? No. You know, and what I is the logic so. behind that? Well, the the I think in my in my in my opinion it would be um, they re, they realize right from wrong as you know and then that would be back to your your worldview, you know, um, where, where is right it, it what it, what's is it right or wrong to even do that, you know? 
I don't, I don't think any animal th- considers ethics or morals. Yeah, I mean, because if a squirrel like a takes another thing. squirrel's nuts because it needs to survive for the winter, it's just going to do it. it just, yeah, they're just, nature just, they're just does. They're just thinking about survival yeah. and instinct. But then, but then you can bring up examples of um, well-documented uh, tr- uh, tribes or groups of uh, higher apes that have hi- uh, hierarchies and laws and rules mm. and politics. And if, well, if a certain yeah, monkey breaks a rule, yeah. then that monkey gets punished. So, well, well that's easily explained yeah. naturalistically, I think. But well, um, no, I, I agree, explain that justly. But what PMOS was saying, we're like, they don't have the ability to. I somehow I forgot what he said two seconds ago. But, okay, but like science is also trying to manipulate us, like the atheists, to think that we're so much like animals. Like they they ran this scam where they said that this ape. A uh, gorilla could speak sign language and talk. Yeah, I'll give you a better one. And than that, that was a that was a total lie. That was a total hoax. That that ape did not know sign language, and uh, people believe this lie to this day. About mm-hmm. that, I'll give well, you. I mean, that, I would like the sources real. on that not being true because I like to in- inspect the claim that it did not learn language yep. at all. Um, it seems like I seen the video where the um the I think they might be baboons, um, but they're they're on a, uh I think they're in China somewhere. I'll, I'll, the video's here. I can get it for you. Want to look at it? Where one of them f- touches a th- third rail and electrocutes itself, and falls in the water, and the other one comes down there and uh, resuscitates it, brings it back to life. Yeah, it sounds familiar. Okay, um, and bites. You know, he's biting on him, and then he starts pumping on his chest. Well, he's just you know, that's obviously um, he's probably not making the conscious decision that um. You know, I need to, you know, altruism. Like I need to save my fellow monkey's life, but more than that, somewhere down the road, that it's, you know, um, they've fallen up a tree or something. They went down there and bit them before they've come back to, you know, what I mean, it's woken them up if they've been knocked silly or something, you know. So, well, but you're making a claim, but you, mm-hmm. but you're not backing up. Why couldn't that be the monkey wants to save its friend? Elephants have funerals, right? Yeah, that's what I was going to bring up was elephants because um, there is. Um, it, yeah. There was a, and what's interesting about elephants is that it seems that a lot of them are not as intelligent necessarily, but the leaders are like really highly intelligent. The older ones, um, yeah. at least as far as navigating distances and stuff, it seems to be only the leaders who keep track of that and are really good at that. And maybe that's just hard to test. Maybe the other ones are just obedient or something. Yeah, I, I've been no I, either way, a biologist, right? I, I would argue my Discovery Channel understanding yeah. of this stuff. <laughs> Before we go too far, though, I would argue because you could take something like the sandpiper. Like, how in the world would it know to fly to Hawaii and, and calculate the right thing? Because the babe, the mom and daddies take off, and the babies are hatched, and they got to collect food and everything, and they just know how to go. So some of that could just be front loaded into it. You know what I mean? So I don't know how much God is. Yeah, how uh, does a spider make its web, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm getting at. So I'm not yeah, sure what would be logic. Go ahead, Nicholas. Well, here's what's um, really fascinating with the elephants is that um, there was a, a famous elephant researcher, and when he died, um, elephants can use low frequencies um, through the ground and stuff to communicate over really long distances, and when he died three different elephant herds all came and visited his wife. I don't remember for how many days it was, but it was for multiple days. And while they were there, um, they didn't like um, tear apart any of her, um, what do they call landscaping or anything like that. They were very respectful of the whole property and stuff. And, um, so even when this human died, they came and did their elephant funerals thing for this human. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's pretty astounding on a yeah. few different levels there. And um, so I, I, I'm not sure. Um, or, so I guess you, uh, from an atheistic point of view, you'd be or, or naturalistic point of view, you'd be arguing that this would be precursors to where we're at right now in humanity. Yeah, I, I to me, I can connect a line from, again, okay. super, super simple, like spiders and insects. And you can draw that line up through elephants, octopus, dolphin, monkey, up to us. Yeah, I, to me, there's a line there. Okay, but we were made higher than, you know, the animals. So that we're, well, we were... were we? Yeah, exactly. Were we made higher or do we just happen to focus more on our heads than on our bodies? 
right? That's that, that's kind of, to my understanding, that's the evolutionary point of view where we we are physically weak creatures compared to gorillas, but we are more intelligent creatures. So much so that we got to the point to let's say make fire, and that gave us the more what protein from our meat or sugars and stuff like that, which allowed us to get more calories to grow, 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 right? And I can since I can draw a line from in from a uh, black widow biting the head off its mate up through and i can see this trend therefore there's a trend and i don't see i don't see god making spiders dumb and monkeys spot well i do but um and, <laughs> and well, you know what pmar has said about animals um and i summarized it when i said that they're not capable of the mental gymnastics to deny god I mean, they also didn't eat the fruit of good and evil to have the pride to really want to deny God. But however we parse it, I just, the God explanation is a lot better. And of course, I have a magic bullet here, but I don't just want to kill the I guess I, I would also I'll keep bullet. it in my Save pocket it. for a Save minute. So it for just a second. <laughs> but have you, have you ever listened <laughs> to Frank Turek or, uh, or, or Ogre? Um, uh, he, I'm not familiar with that. Okay, um, and I believe this was Frank. I'm sorry if, I, if uh, I'm almost positive it is, but um, where he argued that um, it's a good thing that we have um, animals or um, let's say monkeys that are very similar and they even mice because we can do testing on them, whereas we don't have to put a human in there, you know what I mean? Yeah, so that could be one reason. Um, you know, there's several reasons, different reasons, but that's one plausible reason. Uh, I, you know I guess I, mean? I should um, quantify that. I'm not trying to say that this is an argument. For against theism i think it's just you know something interesting in my yeah. back yeah something that you know in my uh locker that says hey my worldview this also works for support that. your worldview yeah yeah okay. yeah i'm not trying to say i'm not it's trying to make this an yeah. argument yeah. and it and it's something that supports your worldview on your side and i guess it works for both so just you know i see a six you see a nine sort of thing and that's really weird, you know, that because all through, if you look in a lot of ways in, in, in the different sides of the argument, it's like, and not just necessary things that can be manipulated because the devil will do that. But it seems like maybe God is leaving that because he's, he makes himself enough evidence to be known, but he doesn't just come out and like put a thing on the moon that says, you know, I'm God, I made this. So everybody knows for sure, because he wants you to be able to um, have free will and choose, you know, and um, to choose good over evil, too. You know, and that so you need to think about that as well. Well, yeah, and if I choose wrong, I get to burn the lake of fire, my soul well, gets annihilated. No, no, like, yeah, it's like a man, <laughs> it's like a God is oh, a man, a rich man who's trying to like hide his we wealth from a woman because he doesn't want her to marry him <laughs> for his money. I don't know, God <laughs> was an analogy. Him. Okay, you like that analogy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, then, um. Then Jesus the Christ makes the character of God obvious. And if you want God for the right reasons, then you're mm -hmm. going to see that obviousness. And Christ put it this way All who are of the truth hear my voice. I'm into that. And so, Orge, you're just not of the truth. And um, that goes back to the whole sin thing I was talking about before. It, yeah. But, um, well, if we're done with all that animal talk, then I can bring out my magic bullet about the animals. Fire, fire sure. away. Shoot yeah, away. Um, every logical and scientific indication is that abiogenesis is not a possibility. And so, therefore, it's nonsense to propose common ancestry. And so, um, yeah, some, someone has to decide how they're then accounting for origin of life without a creator since there's no other viable oh. explanation. Yeah, the, the, the four bit uh, four bit NERC code really is a is a hard one for would be a hard one for me to get over, even if I wasn't a Christian or uh, if I was you know a different religion or or um was wanting to apostatize or something. I, well, I would not be able to accept evolution. Well, that, that's like a high, talking about that four bit code um, or whatever. And then um, that's like uh, if you had to high jump, mm -hmm. you know, to the moon. And then, Chris Keith, you're like, well, high jumping over the Empire State Building, that just 
seems like a hard one to get over. And it's like, why are we even going that far with it? Like, let's just like uh, 20 feet or something is pretty much sufficient. But like, if well, we, yeah, I mean, just, <laughs> just even getting, you know, a pro protein, yeah, that, that would be in pop, but we don't even bring in the cells or anything. I always just stick with DNA because that's just the one that just like, you know, you've, that you have to have that, you know, to, the information. That's that's the that's the key point. You have to have the information because without that, you're not building any of the blueprints to build anything. We know that. I mean, does anything just naturally build itself? I mean, in nature. Now you'll say crystals or snowflakes, but that's just following the structure of the molecule. That's not really building something, taking two different um, or pieces from separate areas and put them together. Can, can I would like to distill it down real quick, because the way I would distill down this whole discussion is that. Um, chemicals cannot organize themselves into um, specified complexity. That is just not a possibility. And yet it would be absolutely necessary for abiogenesis to be viable. So yeah. I'll say one this thing about the animals up. real quick. I just want to say like, um, can we all agree that furries are going to hell? <laughs> fur fur furries? Yeah. Don't look it up. Don't look Don't it up. <laughs> Is this people who wear like mascot style costumes? Yeah, they dress and, like animals. It's and their animals. it's their thing. If you get what we're saying. Yeah. It's, oh, okay. Well, I don't. Yeah. Oh, that's probably a good thing. I don't know what you're talking about, then, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> don't don't Google that. Don't go to. The I won't. Search. Definitely don't <laughs> be it. But um, this is a clean they, computer, so I want to keep it that way. No <laughs> viruses or any crap like that. Yeah, yeah. Open up your private browser, uh, Nicholas. To me, that argument just sounds like um, irreducible complexity. A um, we I don't have the I don't have a answer that is good enough for you. Therefore, you say it's not possible to have an answer, and that basic argument always fails in my eyes. It would. It, Go ahead, Nicholas, as it was addressed to you. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. It, 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 I mean, irreducible complexity. Um, well, no, that's a more specific argument. My argument is more that we I'm know, using as a term, is that we, we know enough about chemicals to know that it's not possible that they might do that under any circumstance. So um, I know you didn't refer to it as in like an of the gaps argument, but you did refer to it as like not enough to convince us or something. I mean... I'm really referring to what we do know. I'm not trying to refer to any kind of lack of knowledge. If that, you know. Yeah. Um, I I've not. I, this ain't my area of expertise in any way, shape, or form. I know some random atheists come on here, and let me tell you how it actually started with that yeah. pot of scum. Uh, well, I ain't gonna uh, try that. The the PhDs but. can't do anything in favor of the argument either like the the best phds in the world at it who are the most expert they have nothing so um it does it so yeah <laughs> there's that hey if that's how you believe it cool no offense nicholas i'm not going to take your word that you've talked to every phd that studied this so yeah, but uh, we've I think we've talked uh, seen enough that's talked about there are PhDs that are in the field that say they don't really have no they're nowhere close to having a clue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's the fraudulent experiments involved, the irrelevant experiments, um, the things that are like um, it's sort of like if there was a crystallization process that put like iron or let's say silver, right? Like there's silver veins and rocks or whatever, right? Well, that's not that evidence true. that maybe a computer could evolve. So even the very best stuff they have, like, well, we did manage to get proteins out of a circumstance or something. Like that's sort of like saying, oh, look, we found a vein of silver in this rock. Maybe computers could evolve out of nature. <laughs> and it's just really, really, there's nothing. So there, there, there's nothing to support the idea whatsoever, but there's yeah. plenty to go against it. It's a totally one-sided argument as far as um, and, and what you, the data shows. You see what he's saying there too, Org, because it's it's like they're like because a lot of people say, well, it just needs the flame to get lit, and then it can just take off for itself from there. But um, why why would the, the chemicals even why would they even 
try to self-assemble into to, to like a, a molecule. To like, you'd have to start with RNA. You couldn't. I don't think you could go any. I, I'm like not even. I, 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 very I know you're not an expert. I know you're not an expert. I'm just using this. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, I guess to reemphasize my point, Nicholas, what you're saying to me is something I hear a lot in this circle, which is the scientists have decided blank. And those statements almost always seem to be incorrect. I remember, and let me finish, please. Let me finish. I remember Neff, Nephilim Free was talking uh, like a debate or a conversation a few days ago about tree ring dating, dendrochronology. He was saying, everyone's given up on that, blah, blah, blah. And I went to Google Scholar, looked up tree ring dating, and there's plenty of papers published this year of scientists using tree ring dating. Obviously, Neff was incorrect. It's still very commonly used because people actively publishing it in prestigious journals today. Scientists use it. So, well, I mean, I'm sure you have your argument. You probably have a good reason in your mind for it. I can't take your word that every biologist that studies this has just given up on the concept. Yeah, I understand that. Um, and I really have a problem with Neff that anytime he decides to go with something, he then becomes unmovable on that to a point. I was using them as an example. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not insulting yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, but um, no way. <laughs> and, and my response to you about the, about um, kind of gish galloping that there's frauds out there and that the best thing they do have is irrelevant in this and that. My point was just to quickly um, show that, like, I am aware of the field in that they have nothing to support the concept so um you don't have to believe me but i, I did want to put it out there that i'm That's not cool. just yeah. like unaware or something no i'm not trying to call you stupid or anything god no i um but yeah that, that's cool yeah Does anyone think that Biden looks evil? <laughs> I just say it. I think he looks pretty evil to me. Well, he doesn't look as evil as Bernie Sanders, but um, after all the riots and stuff, they weren't going to elect Bernie Sanders. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's one of the less demonic looking Democrats out there. That's for you, sure. You guys do realize <laughs> Jill's photo looks like Bible Trump's about to crush the Bible into pulp. So, I mean, let's be honest here. <laughs> <laughs> Shalom, Jill. I've caught a few of Jill's videos house. lately. Yeah, I got over and binged on a couple of videos on Jill's channel. Uh, maybe Sunday. Yeah, and um, somehow in Nevada, basically a hundred percent of the votes seem to be going to Trump now. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 isn't it crazy? I mean, I mean, I, I'm not a conspiracy nut, but come on, man. Um, how do, how are they picking up these? The Republicans picking up these seats, but then they they didn't. I guess they uh, didn't. Most of the time, they vote. You vote across the ticket. You know what I mean? You don't. You don't. It's very kind of rare that you 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 pick somebody, then you go through there and pick a different president. You know, so not to be getting any votes like that. It's just it's weird, man. It's especially in Pennsylvania where they won't let them in there to see what's going on. But we don't want to get that going here tonight because I'm sure that's going to be coming up here soon well, yeah. on TV. Not to abandon that politics, but I got to go to bed. So yeah, take care, everyone. Well, good no, talking. Take care, Robert. Thanks for coming, buddy. Yeah, something something's going on sinister here behind the works. I feel it. it. Is. It's getting traction now, though. Finally, at first I was like, I was watching election night, and I was like, when they stopped counting this in the water pipe busting in Georgia, I said, what in the war are they talking about? They're at ninety four percent. They're going to stop counting. Then they started to stop counting in, in uh, um, North Carolina. They wouldn't call Florida. They wouldn't call Texas, but they called Arizona, like with like sixteen percent. Arizona like, betrayed. Yeah, I yeah, think that, betrayed I, Trump too. That's, that's going to be their their problem right there because that showed that just showed their. Um, even with news networks, all of them, they're biased, you know? So I don't know if Trump don't win. I bet he starts his own news network and goes crazy on his guy. That's a lot of business. Dude, I just don't know what to do when he's in office. So I can't handle Biden. He's like one of the most despicable people. I've ever you won't seen. have to worry about